parents, do not assume your kid's gender. That is the worst thing you can do when they first come into this f***ed up world. Let them figure it out for themselves. Parents always say you can be anything you want when you grow up. Well, guess what? That applies to gender, too. Stop seeing everything in pink and blue and get a new perspective. Your gender is whatever you identify as, and they're not going to know right away when they pop out of your crotch. So keep that in mind when the doctor says, congratulations, it's a shut the f*** up, doc. That's the stupidest f***ing thing I've ever heard in my life. Right. Okay? That is just stupid. So that young lady we just heard from thinks that children should figure it out for themselves. You know who says things like that? People that have never had kids. Parents are there to guide their children and teach them right from wrong and instill morals and values in them so when they get out on their own, they can become productive members of society. You don't just let them figure it out for themselves. That's nonsense. Anyway, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I have a fairly crazy weekend clown world update for you guys today. And as usual, we have no time to waste. So, let's get into it. Now, now if you place your attention on the screen for a moment. So, here we have a post from Roberta. I'm guessing formerly known as Robert. I don't know. Um, Roberta posted a before and after photo. The caption says, 18 days on feminizing HRT, which we all know is hormone replacement therapy. Obviously not much, but my friends and I kind of see something in my cheeks. We'll update in a month or so. I don't see anything in the cheeks. I just see a shaved mustache. Whatever. He looks like a fucking loser. All right, let's keep this party rolling with everybody's favorite washed up Hollywood actress or comedian or actually, I don't even know what the hell she's famous for, but whatever. Rosie O'Donnell. Roll it. OK, I got a lot of bad comments, a lot because I, I said some anti-Trump things and, uh, you know, that's not going to stop apparently till the, the November elections are done. And um I just think the world forgets just how horrible he was to all of us. And Americans are in a cult-like trance, the 40-something percent that support him so vehemently. It's unreal with the amount of charges and evidence against him that people would still consider him the man who orchestrated an insurrection against our government to once again be the president of the United States. It makes no sense to me. And um, <clears throat> and I'm going to talk about it until November. So if you don't like that, I don't know what kind of, I can tell you, but it's the most important thing. It's democracy is uh, on trial. And, you know, whether we get to continue with this experiment of a democratic republic, right, whether we get to be what the United States should always be, a, a beacon of light, and hope and decency and democracy for the world, but we've fallen from there pretty far, I think. What did you say? What the f did you just say? Americans are in a cult-like trance, the 40-something percent that support him so vehemently. Oh, shut up, silly woman. So Rosie says that the people in this country that support Trump, the 40-something percent, I would say it's far higher than that. I'm thinking 60 to 70 percent at least. But anyway, she says those people are in a cult-like trance. However, Rosie's the one that's making TikTok saying, you got to vote blue no matter who. We got to support our candidate. Even if it's Joe Biden, even if you don't like him, you got to vote blue no matter who. Isn't that a cult-like trance in itself? Anyway, next up, so this person is going to tell us all what to do if we ever misgender somebody. Roll it. A lot of people ask me, what should I do or say when I misgender someone? Simply put, apologize briefly, thank whoever corrected you, move on, and avoid doing it again. We're all bound to misgender someone accidentally, so it's important to know what to do when it happens. But let's break this down further. When we use the wrong pronouns or gender terms for someone, we invalidate their identity. This is called misgendering. And for many trans and non-binary people, this happens all the time. 
But many cisgender people also experience misgendering, whether it be based on their name, appearance, or pitch of their voice. No matter who is misgendered, it all feels the same, like a punch in the gut, or that you don't matter or exist. So what should you do when you misgender someone? Try these four steps. One, apologize briefly and clearly. An example can be, I'm sorry I misgendered you, I won't do it again. Two, if someone has corrected you, thank them. They're not calling you a bad person, they're supporting you in becoming a better ally. Three, move on with what you were doing. Don't make this a bigger deal than it needs to be, and don't make it about you. And four, take steps to avoid making the same mistake. Practicing and memorizing someone's pronouns can help, but it's even better to take the time to deconstruct the assumptions you automatically make about someone's gender when you see, hear, or read about them. I'm the bearded lady! What are you, one of the freaks?! So remember, we have to deconstruct whatever it is inside of us that made us misgender somebody. Anyway, next up, we've been hearing a lot of songs here on the channel lately, mostly about pronouns and gender and such. However, here we have a song about the virus that swept through the world a few years back, and you'll never believe who sings it. None other than Dr. Francis Collins, who is, I'm sure as most of you remember, Dr. Anthony Fauci's right-hand man. Now, I can't promise I'm going to make it through this whole song, but I'll get as far as I can. Roll it. Poof, coronavirus came from overseas, infecting folks across the land, Seattle, NYC. A little bat's virus Love those human cells Next thing you know The cases grow And the world has gone to It's a family show Heck Poof, coronavirus Came from overseas Infecting folks across the land Seattle, NYC Poof, coronavirus Called COVID-19 Quickly spread like a wild fire, now we're in quarantine. Now no one can travel or even leave their homes. Schools are closed, all kids must know, avoid the danger zones. We all must do our part to protect the ones we love. So if you meet at least six feet and handle doors with gloves, oh, poop, coronavirus came from overseas, infecting folks across the land of Seattle, NYC. Your song? It's awful. I hate it. So what'd you guys think of his wife floating around the room pretending she was the virus? That was f***ing weird. Anyway, next up, so this clip has nothing to do with anything. And it's very short too, but this person is a biological man who identifies as a trans woman calls himself a transbian, which we all know by now is a trans lesbian. And yes, this person does brag about using the ladies' restroom. Roll it. This is why I hate SpongeBob. One, he's annoying. Two, he's stupid. Three, his voice. Look at me, I'm a big fat slob. So when I first saw this next clip, I thought it was parody. I thought somebody was doing a skit. And oh boy, was I wrong. So this person above my head in the uniform is a high-ranking trans military officer talking about inclusion in our armed forces. Why though? Roll it. So inclusion is a national security imperative. We fight today and we are gonna fight in the future using brain power. And if that brain who's gonna revolutionize the way we fight in space, we fight in cyber, just happens to be in a trans body, you should want them all serving alongside me. And for your organizations, it's the same way. Those perspectives that we get from a diverse set of individuals, it's been talked about on stage a lot regarding the science behind high-performing teams, we need those perspectives. But it's inclusion that actually drives that. Because you can bring people in and if they don't feel safe to speak up, if they don't feel safe to bring their full selves to work, you're not gonna get the value of the diversity. So for us, it is absolutely critical to drive our future success as an organization and potentially on the battlefield. And I think it's the same way for all of you because we can't leave that talent that is gonna revolutionize the way we do business behind. 
What is your major malfunction, num nuts? Didn't mommy and daddy show you enough attention? All right, real quick, before we go any further, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsors of today's video. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to let this loop on the screen now. Good for this young lady for getting in the pool. They say swimming is the best exercise, right? So now just make a routine of it. Anyway, today's video is being brought to us by first sponsor all the way from the Netherlands, Eric Bosch. Eric, thank you so much, sir, for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate the support. Second sponsor of today's video is our great friend, Coda320, who is down in South America scoping things out in case things get a little too dicey up here in the good old US of A. So, Coda320, thank you so much, sir. Always greatly appreciated. You know you keep my faith in humanity, so thank you. So, Eric Bosch from the Netherlands and Coda320, thank you guys so much for sponsoring today's video. Now, if you'd like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description box below, and I will say your full name as a sponsor of said video unless stated otherwise by you. All right, get this off the screen, please. Oof. Oh my God, look at that whale. Now, apparently some people out there haven't heard the lecture that we all just got a little earlier from the bearded lady about misgendering because this person who is a biological man that identifies as a trans woman keeps getting misgendered. Roll it. I have a very serious question for those of you who keep missing my gender. When have you ever met a he, him who looks like this, huh? She, her, yes, they, them, sure. He, him, who? And if you do know a he who hymns like this, power to him. But the he, hims I know never he the way I, she. So when I present you with she, they so kindly, could you not he, him all over my sleigh? Thank you. What the f*** are you talking about, man? All right, next up we have one of those man on the street type interviews, although... I don't think they're on the street. I don't know where the hell they're at. But this gentleman asked these young ladies a very basic question. And they, they're they so far off from getting the answer that it's mind-numbing to me. I don't think we're going to survive as a species. Roll it. Do you guys get this question right? I will give you $100. If you're driving 80 miles per hour, how long does it take for you to go 80 miles? 80, um, 80 hours. All right, take 70 hours. 70 hours. <laughs> Uh, 80 hours? Uh, <laughs> final answer? 80, 80, 80, 80 hours. hours. 80 hours. How do you get 80 from 70? It's miles. Yeah, how do you get 80 from 70? Because I pick 70. I don't think you guys are pushing P enough. We're not? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, laugh out loud. <laughs> do I get the 100? And there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. All right, guys, this next clip is pretty crazy. I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. So this is a Zoom call from back in 2021, I think, of five secretaries of states, one in Maine, Shayna Bellows, my home state, one in Colorado, one in Michigan, and I can't remember the other two, but these are all the places that they're tr trying to take Trump off the ballot. These ladies, all liberal white women, all look the same, all sound the same got together for a Zoom call back in 2021. Seems like this may have been planned out. Roll it. And uh, Secretary Bellows, would love to hear about your thoughts on like our the biggest threats facing uh, our democracy at this point in time. Well, what Secretary Griswold just said and named is something that was unimaginable two years ago or 10 years ago, and that is election sabotage, it is a crystal clear example of what's happening all across the country. So we need to organize to make sure we have better leaders in positions of power to fight back against that. Uh, Secretary Benson talked about uh, voter suppression, and that's something that when we started our careers at the ACLU and Southern Poverty Law Center, fighting back about systematic, structural voter oppression targeting specifically black and brown voters. It's rooted in white supremacy. That is something we have to continue to do work on. And Secretary Merrill talked about the For the People Act and the Freedom to Vote Act. We must have federal standards all across the country. And then finally, just to echo my colleagues, this is rooted in a deliberate camp and organized campaign to discourage people from participating in our democracy. It is an attack on our very democracy itself. Because when everyone participates, everything that we care about, social justice, climate justice, economic justice, we win. And those on the other side 
are trying to discourage people from participating. That's what this really is about. We have to fight back to protect our democracy, to protect everything. That's such a good point. I think you're all in the head. All right, guys, we're going to be wrapping it up with this clip of Hollywood actor Gary Busey. Now, he played some great roles in the past. I loved him in Lethal Weapon. He had kind of a tough go at things. He's looking a little rough here, but he has a great message. And also, real quick, guys, I wanted to remind you to go check out my wife's Etsy store, Red Clover Fields. She's got some fantastic stuff on there, stuff I use every day. I take a spoonful of the elderberry syrup every day to boost my immune system. I put the calendula balm on my hands to keep them from getting dry and cracked up here in the cold New England winters. So if you're looking to boost your immune system or looking for some other natural remedies, definitely go peruse her store. I will put a link to that in the description box below. Anyway, guys, things are clearly getting crazy out there, so please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time. Love you guys. Peace. Roll it. A new year is coming up. And we say Happy New Year. Just know in advance that every year is going to be happy. It's up to you to make it happy. Fun. Free. And loving. Oh, my goodness. That's the most badass thing I've ever heard. And you ain't black.